We are, we're looking at exploring the capabilities that directed energy has to offer against counter UAS, a counter unmanned aircraft system threats, uh, small man portable systems. The Air Force has three major areas, air base defense, precision engagement, and aircraft self-protect. This is the first uh, probably near-term low-hanging fruit that we can actually get after as we start opening up the bottleneck for directed energy, transitioning it from the S&T side of the house to operationalizing it. Yeah, so we have a high power microwave system and a high energy laser system. Uh, both came out, we've we looked at and are exploring the capabilities that both have to offer independently as well as a, a joint look uh, in engagement. So your laser engagement is really going to be a, a thermal energy disposition on the target. So you require the energy to heat up on that target to be able to destroy it. So uh, you, you heard the, the laser comment, uh, most of the time we, we actually hit that and it actually burns a hole, a kinetic effect where it actually drops it out of the sky because of that burned hole. With high powered microwave it may be a little different, it may just interrupt the actual performance and the, the weapon system will have to go back to where it came from. It may actually do enough damage that it loses its control, so like an autopilot and it loses that autopilot and it just drops to the ground. Coming back from Afghanistan last year in October, I was at a base where we had a lot of unmanned systems sitting over and watching everything we do. And so for the future, our, our airmen would like to not be monitored 24-7. And this will push that back so they don't have that monitoring capability. This is moving past a, a tech demonstration to, to prove out technical feasibility. This is really looking at exploring the, the doctrine, the policy, the, the training necessary. When we, when we go out and take these systems into field, do we have the right concepts of operation, the tactics, techniques, and procedures in place to actually use these systems? Yeah, I think the important part of experimentation, you hear a valley of death, where we have technologies in the lab, we don't always get it out to operating uh, units. This experimentation uh, bridges that valley of death, gets it out to the operators earlier on, so they can experiment with it and understand it before it's actually deployed. And the Whisper Range is just a phenomenal setup and a location that we want to continue to use just because of the proximity of the equipment that you've got and the capabilities that it brings to directed energy experimentation.